Hello, my name is Teacher Bell and welcome to another tips, review, and tutorial today. So, how to get students engaged? We will focus on the high yield teaching strategies. Okay, so when we use these strategies, we mostly use this to engage students in class discussions in group collaborations and during informal formative assessments. So we're gonna give you tips on each of these categories. Okay, but before we deep dive into each of the strategies, let me just mention some of the requisites of a high yield teaching strategy. So again, the gist of the high yield instructional strategies boils down to one thing, which is getting the class moving because movement actually activates the brain. Yeah, there so. should be movement at least every third, every 10 minutes in your class. It doesn't have to be major movements, minor, just by simply playing music during transition or using hand signals call and response strategies will get the class moving. I have a video on that one. I'm going to drop the link also in the description so you can watch that. Um, in any case that you weren't able to do movement in every 10 minutes, you can always regain class energy using these high yield strategies. And uh, it's very important that you model and rehearse every strategy so that all students will be familiarized and they actually know what they are doing independently. And uh, of course, you have to consistently display the daily goal because it helps the students keep their focus on the main thing. Okay, so let's deep dive into the strategies. Okay, so we're going to focus on two categories. Uh, these are the strategies that I mostly use, which has which have been really effective in my class. Okay, let's do the first one in discussion and collaboration. So the most common one, the turn and talk. So the predetermined partner, it could be the front partner or the side partner. So when you do turn and talk, you can say, face your front partner or your side partner. Once you pose a question or a prompt, give them time to think first. I usually give a minute or two. That's their silent time to think about their response before they pair up and discuss it with their partner. And then and the student will share it out um, to the whole class. Okay. Next one is uh, the choral reading. So this is best used during literature or any subject that requires reading. Saying you don't have to do this every time. This is just something to regain their energy. Um, but then there are um, requirements for choral reading. It should be read in unison and, and I always remind my class to think about the ACEs when we do choral reading. You will see they're reading the words correctly, comprehension if they're trying to understand what they're reading. Expression also contributes to comprehension. So that's also one element. And the speed, nobody gets left behind, nobody reads ahead. Okay, that's choral reading. Next one is the gallery walk. You can do this extended activity during group projects. So once they are done with group projects, you can post um, their work on the walls or just spread it around the classroom. So again, this keeps the students moving and they get to see each of uh, the group's work. But it comes with a task. So this is not some this is not just something that the students can go around and walk and chit chat. Okay, next we have the jigsaw, um, the jigsaw activity. There are three steps for this one. So the first step would be the students stay in their jigsaw group. They go to their expert group and they come back together in their jigsaw group. And then you assess on all the contents. So on the first step, you divide the class into four or six equal groups. And 
um, how many members in each of the group should also be how you divide your content. So if there are four members, then you need to divide the, your lesson content into four and then assign one content to each. Okay. So for example, if they are in their jigsaw group, they're going to work independently researching the task that was assigned to them or the topic that was assigned to them. Once they're done with that independent group, they go to their expert groups where they're going to compare their work with other students who were working on that same topic. Okay. Once they compare and master that topic, they go back to their jigsaw group and share each of the content that was assigned to them. Okay. So they learn from each other. And then at the end of uh, the jigsaw group collaboration, you try to assess if there's time on all the contents. Okay, next. And the last one, we have the numbered heads together. I really love this one. I, I used this just last year and my students really loved it too. So the prerequisite um, before doing this, you have to have a predetermined number for each student. So before the class start, you can assign already their number in the table. So if there are four students in one table, one could be one, two, three, and four. So the teacher asks a question, the students write their answer. So you give them time first to think about their responses. And then students stand up. When you say numbered heads together, that's a cue that the students need to stand up. They're going to collaborate and share their answers uh, with the group. Once they are done sharing, you should have modeled this or rehearsed this already. So when the group is done collaborating, they can sit down to signal that they are done. And then the teacher calls one number and everyone with that number shares out one after the other. So this is something that you can do instead of the random class participation, you can do this for, again, to target movement in class. Okay, so those are the five steps for discussion and collaboration. Okay, let's go to some specific strategies to engage students during class formative assessment. So this one is an informal formative assessment just to get the class moving and evaluate what have they learned. So number one is a quiz quiz trade. Again, prior to doing this, you should already have a different set of question cards for each of your students. So if you have 30 in the class, you should also have 30 question cards. So for the quiz quiz trade, you can actually use music to do this activity. So once you play the music, the students will stand up, they go around, and once the music stops, whoever is the person closest to them, that's going to be their partner. So they pair up with that partner with a high five. You give them at least two to three minutes. Once the pair of students are done asking and answering questions they're going to switch card before you turn on the music again so when they go find another partner they have a different question card so for the four corners you should have predetermined which of the corner represents a letter so you ask a question in this case for example where would you most likely go for a vacation so whichever is there, whichever the students' answers are, they need to go to that corner, which represents their answer. Okay, so that's how you do the four corners. Next, gamifying your classroom. So these are some of the um, websites that I use to gamify formative assessments. Kahoot, Bluecat, if you are familiar with this. If not, try all of this. They really are amazing in getting your students engaged. Um, quizzes, Quizlet, GimKit, Edpuzzle, Nearpa, the Jeopardy. I am going to make a different set of tutorial video on this one. We're going to compare their features and 
um, layouts and how students sign in and what available questions are in each of these websites. Okay, so that's the end of my presentation. I hope you learned something from how you're going to get your students engaged in class, especially for discussion, collaboration, and assessment. Thank you very much and have a great day. Bye-bye.